This video highlights important considerations for managing emergency situations involving patients with highly infectious respiratory pathogens. Key considerations include infection control measures, team organization, and communication. For more effective infection control, we recommend organizing the staff into two teams. The first team remains inside the isolation room to attend to the patient. The second team stays outside of the isolation room to prepare the equipment and drugs required for resuscitation. The patient's name, age and weight should be written on the outer door at the time of admission. The patient's code sheet should also be printed at this time. All medical staff must don full personal protective equipment according to the department guidelines prior to entering the room. In this instance, this includes a N95 mask, eye protection, gown and gloves. Priscilla here, I'm calling from bed 5. I have a patient here that is uh, not looking good. So the situation is only 90%. Uh, she's had breathless or 5 liters oxygen. Uh. So is it okay for you to call the doctor now? Thank you. It is important to recognize a sick patient and call for help early. This allows additional help to arrive in a timely manner and adequate time for them to don PPE. Limit staff movement in and out of the room to prevent cross-contamination. Use the ward phone where possible. Uh, can you tell me about the patient? Uh, okay, Simon is a five uh, years old boy presented with uh, fever and breathlessness of one day and now he's having saturation of 90% of 5 liters oxygen. Okay. He looks a bit tachinic and unwell. Okay. Yeah. Have an assessment of the patient first? Yeah, he also. Okay, the patient is very tachycardic now and he's also tachycardic and he's still desaturating. Like, you might have me just prepare up suctioning equipment. Let's also stand by uh, 20 ml uh, per kg fluid polar for the patient to actually pop up for the tachycardia. Then at the same time also, I think I will only add additional support. Okay, hi, uh, Priscilla here. I need an extra nurse to help uh, to don on PAPR and then to help with the suctioning for the patient. Uh, and then also need um, equipment for fully bolus, a non reading mask, and uh, can you help me call the registrar also? Yeah, thank you. Considerations when attending to a sick patient. Assess the need for monitoring, like ECG leads, equipment, like a non rebreather mask, medications like fluid bolus, additional manpower, such as senior doctors and nurses, and personal protective equipment. Bundle the items together and hand them into the room in one pass. A powered air purifying respirator, or PAPR, is recommended for aerosol generating procedures such as suctioning, intubation, and bag and valve mask. Anticipate and communicate the need for a PAPR to the staff outside to give them ample preparation time. Equipment should be prepared in complete bundled sets and taken into the room in one pass. This is to minimize cross contamination. Just let me prepare the suctioning for the child also. Like. Identify yourself clearly when you enter the room. Ask for a brief summary of the situation. Hello, hi, I am Dr. Tan. I am the ward registrar. Can you give me a hand over of the patient situation? Okay, so this patient is a five-year-old child. They just got admitted to hospital. Okay, please let me assess him and please call for a code blue for children. Thank you. Code blue for children. Activate code blue early. This allows additional help to arrive in a timely manner and adequate time to don PPE before entering the patient room while minimizing delays in patient care. Please take the e trolley. To minimize contamination, the emergency e trolley must be left outside the room. The doors to the patient room and the ante room should remain closed. The defibrillator may be taken inside the room if necessary. The patient is desaturating with poor respiratory effort. We need to bag this patient. Can a nurse please get the back valve mask with the HEPA filter? I will need the back valve mask with the HEPA filter. Maybe let's bring out the bed a bit more. The box containing the back valve mask and oral airway, as well as the HEPA filter, should be passed into the room. The back valve mask should be assembled in the isolation room. A HEPA filter should be attached to the back valve mask to minimize dispersion of infected secretions. The HEPA filter is attached between the expiratory valve and the face mask. I will continue to bag the patient. Would you please go and get the normal saline bolus, 20 ml per kilo, and please obtain another intravenous access. Uh, Randa, you just help me go and get the cannulation bundle? Yep. To minimize cross-contamination, 
the inside team's runner should stay within the isolation room and the NT room. Here are the contents of the cannulation bundle required. The trial saturation is now 70%, the heart rate is 193, blood pressure 77 over 37. The child is having desaturation despite begging. We need to prepare for intubation. Hello, I'm the ICU reg. I'm here to help. Limit the number of people entering the patient room. The ICU registrar should take the role of the outside team leader and obtain a handover from the inside team leader. So we will need to prepare for intubation because it still remains hypoxic. I will need intubation equipment and RSI drugs. What RSI drugs do you want and what intubation equipment do you want? Uh, I will need intravenous ketamine and succinylcholine for my RSI drugs. For intubation equipment, I will need a video laryngoscope with a size 2 blade. I will also need ETT tubes with size 5, 4.5 and 5.5. Okay. Please also send in one more registrar to take over the airway. And please also send in one more nurse to be the document nurse. Okay, sure. uh, this is the code phone. You can use it to communicate with me. The responsibility of the inside team leader is to lead the resuscitation inside the room. He or she should summarize the events and needs of the resuscitation team. As the inside team leader clearly communicate the need for monitoring equipment required for upcoming procedures, medications like rapid sequence intubation drugs, manpower and PPE required, such as an airway nurse with a PAPR. The responsibility of the outside team leaders to receive a brief update of the patient, clarify the needs of the team inside like 3Ms such as manpower, medical equipment and medication, pass the code phone carried by the CIC resusness to the inside team leader to facilitate communication, organize and lead the team outside, prepare the necessary equipment and drugs, and pass necessary equipment into the room in complete bundles. For more effective infection control, we recommend organizing the staff into two teams. To enhance communication and minimize cross-contamination, use the code phone to communicate and the runners from each team to transfer equipment and information. Okay, quick summary of what's happening inside. There's a five-year-old boy inside who is hypotensive and hypoxic. They've already started begging the child and this child will require intubation. Uh, so can I get the airway nurse and a ward nurse to prepare the airway bundle? Can you prepare an ETT uncuff size 4.5, 5 and 5.5 okay. and also the McGrath and a size 2 blade? Tell, let me know when you're ready. Okay. The circulation doctor, CICU nurse and uh, CD nurse, can you all prepare medications for RSI? We'll yes. need ketamine and we'll also need succinylcholine. Do you happen to have the code sheet? Yes. Can you right. prepare according to a code sheet, please? Okay. okay. Can you help me get the ketamine? Yes. Thank you. Refer to the code sheet for drug dilution and doses. Multiple doses of each drug should be prepared and handed in together. Drugs should be labelled clearly with drug name, exact dose and volume. For example, IV ketamine 1.8 mg in 1.8 ml. Each strain should have a single dose of medication only. Necessary drugs may not be in the e-trolley. Some are fridge items and some are in the CD cabinet. The nurse with the CD cabinet key will assist with obtaining these medications. Okay, they need more manpower inside the room. Uh, can I get you to go in and take over the airway from the team leader? Documentation nurse, please go in and uh, stand beside the team leader. I need the re another registrar to stand by the door just to find out what they need inside and communicate it to us. The two of you, can I get you all to go in to stand by for CPR if required? Hello, Deborah. Please let me know when the anesthetist is here. Okay, I'll let you know when the anesthetist is here. Here to take over the airway. I'm here for the documentation. Yeah, can you can stand, stand by for CPR. Okay, please stand aside and then we'll call you if your help is required. Okay, to recap the child's situation, this is a, we have given him a 20 ml per kilo normal saline bolus uh, and we're preparing for his intubation with succinylcholine as well as ketamine. Here are the contents of the airway bundle required. To minimize cross-contamination, bundle necessary equipment and hand it to the runner in a single pass. The outside runner should be the one handing the equipment to the inside runner. Avoid direct contact between members of the outside and inside teams. I am the anesthetist. I can take over the airway. What RSI drugs, uh, airway equipment have you prepared? And is there a video laryngoscope? We have prepared intravenous. Please kindly take over the airway. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I'm ready for intubation. Can you give the ketamine and succinylcholine? Okay. 
The medication is given. Suction. Use the McGrath video laryngoscope with disposable blade to intubate patient. Okay, ETT is in. Can I connect the back valve mask to the HEPA filter and the MR, please? Check ETT position with a capnography. Can you just help me? Check this one. Okay, okay, good. Okay, secure the ETT. ETT is in and secure. We are ready for transfer to Ward 46 ICU. Okay, I'll call Ward 46 uh, to prepare for the transfer. When the patient is ready for transfer, inform the isolation ward ICU to prepare for patient. Activate the security officers to clear the path for the patient's transfer. All staff involved in the transfer should wear full PPE or PAPR. Here is a summary of recommendations. For infection control measures, wear appropriate personal protective equipment. Use specialized equipment to reduce infection risk, such as HEPA filter and video laryngoscope. Speak up for safety for yourself and for the safety of others. For organization of resuscitation team, the inside team is to resuscitate the patient while the outside team is to prepare medications and equipment, bundle drugs and equipment and hand them into the patient's room in a single pass. In terms of communication, the runner on each side transfers information and equipment while the code phone for team leaders is used to communicate. Here is the team organization chart and the bundles for IV cannulation and the intubation equipment. We hope this video enables you to be better prepared for the unique challenges of managing emergency situations in a patient with highly infectious respiratory pathogens.